So I've spent the past few weeks listening to the new R series from Kev in this room. I've watched movies, I've listened to music, I've watched television shows, and I have to say that I really enjoyed my time. I think Kev has built something very special with the speakers. They're not perfect, and I'm going to talk about that in this video, but I have to say overall for a pair of speakers, they sound really good, okay? They sound fantastic. But I did get a chance to listen to a pair of Q series in this room, the Q150s. I bought those a few years ago and I did a review. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check those out or check that video out. But I did compare them to these speakers as well and I'm gonna play some audio samples later in the video so you can hear how they sound back to back and I'll talk about how they sound in this room a little bit more. But before I get too far into it, let's talk a little bit more about the new R series. These are the R6 Meta from Kev. They've given us a closed box or sealed three-way speaker design. And what I mean by three-way is they have a dedicated driver for each one of the major frequencies that we can hear. There are two bass drivers right here that handle the bass. There's a mid-range driver right here on the outside that handles the mid-range or the vocals that we can hear. And in the center of that is a tweeter that handles the treble or the high-end frequencies that we can hear. Now, this configuration or this combination of mid-range and tweeter in the center is called a UniQ driver array by Kef. And this is their 12th generation with Meta material. And that's why this series is called Meta. And what they've done there is they have put their Meta material at the back of the tweeter cabinet. And what it does is it absorbs any sound that's emanating towards the back of the cabinet so it's not emanated out of the cabinet and it gives us a cleaner, pure treble performance. And I have to say, it works. After listening to these speakers for several weeks in this room, this is some of the best treble performance that I have heard in this room. But I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in the sound quality section. Now, another thing that this UniQ driver array does, since you have the tweeter in the mid-range operating as basically a single point source, you don't have any overlapping frequencies creating distortion as the sound emanates out of the cabinet. If you were to have a driver on top of another driver, they could overlap and give us some sort of distortion, but you don't have that here. But another thing they give us is they give us a nice wide dispersion field. So this speaker can be used as a center channel like I have it here in this horizontal orientation where it sits under your television or behind your projector screen and gives you nice wide dispersion. I tried that here, it works. But what they've done here for the R6, which is actually new to the R series, is they've allowed us to not only have it sit horizontally, but we can also stand it vertically like you see here. So we can have a front left or front right speaker that is the same speaker as our center channel so you can have a seamless audio presentation across your front soundstage but since this is also a sealed box you can use it as a side surround you can use it as a rear surround as well and have a seamless audio presentation all the way around your room now if the r6 is a little bit too big for you they also have a smaller version known as the r2 meta and you can do the same thing with it Another feature of the speaker is it does have dual binding posts, so you can buy amp and buy wire it if you want to. So yes, it's really cool that you can buy amp and buy wire your center channel. All right, let's move on and let's talk about my experience with the R6 Meta. And I've spent a few weeks with these watching movies, watching television shows, and listening to music. And I have to say, I was impressed. But the first thing I wanna talk about is its power handling capabilities. Because Kef says that these can handle anywhere from 15 watts to 250 watts of power. I kinda of wanted to try the spectrum. So I have the Cambridge Audio AXA 25 in for review. So I haven't finished that review yet, but if you wanna watch it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be alerted when that review drops. But I was trying that amplifier with these because it can output up to 25 watts per channel and I wanted to see how much I had to crank the volume up to really get some room filling sound out of these speakers. And I have to say that these speakers are four ohms and 88 dB efficient and that is plenty because I only had to turn the volume up to about 50% volume before I had room filling sound with these speakers. So you can turn it up more, but you don't really have to, and that is a good thing. So even at, let's say, a lesser wattage amplifier, let's say 15, 25, you know, 30 watts, something like that, you're going to get room filling sound out of these speakers. That's a good thing. But I also tried the higher end of the spectrum. I used my Mono Price Monolith 7 channel amplifier, which can output up to 300 watts per channel into four ohms like these speakers and it handled that easily okay these speakers can handle all that power 
in Dell Breaker Sweat. But I also tried the Cambridge Audio Evo 150, which is a Class D amplifier, also like a network streamer um, in one box. And I reviewed that. I'll put a link in the description below. But that can output up to 150 watts per channel into eight ohms if memory serves and again it worked very very well now i chose that amplifier because it also has another set of speaker terminals on it so you can a b back and forth with the same amplification and the same source because i wanted to compare the r6 to my own arendo sound 1723s monitor speaker which you see right here wanted to compare the two to hear how they sound but i also wanted to compare it to this speaker right here the q150 from kef this is also mine i reviewed this uh, a couple of years ago i'll put a link to this one in the description below as well to really see or at least hear rather how the q series sounds compared to the new r series and i'm going to talk about my comparisons with these two in just a minute but first of all let's talk about just my overall impressions of the r6 all right so i just want to talk about my impressions of the r6 by itself then i'll talk about my comparisons to these other two and i have to say when I was listening to music, I found myself just tapping my toes because I was enjoying the music. Gospel, jazz, world music, classical, and stuff like that. It was kind of like, hmm, not bad. Tapping my toes. This is really good. And it's because, and I thought about this for a while, these speakers play nuance in detail almost like no other speaker I've heard in this room. Okay? Whatever Kef has done here, the metal material, the cabinet bracing, it's all come together and it sounds fantastic, okay? They're not perfect, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but what they play, they play very, very well. Having a three-way speaker so that we have that dedicated mid-range driver versus the bass driver makes a difference because all of a sudden your mid-range can play by itself and you get prominent mid-range. That was actually one of the things I noticed between these two speakers in general was the mid-range was a little bit more prominent. But even with that prominence, you get more nuance and detail, okay? And so I like these speakers. That's why I like them. They sound really good with music. They're really enjoyable to listen to. Now, as far as how I set them up, I usually have my speakers towed in just a little bit to give me the stereo image, but I found that having these at neutral or just slightly, ever so slightly towed out, gave me just a little bit better stereo imaging with these speakers. I suggest you try it out yourself and kind of figure out what works best for your setup in your room and what you like, but I actually found that these towed either, either right at neutral or towed just slightly out gave me the best presentation. Now, another thing that I test typically is grill on versus grill off and just make sure they're acoustically transparent and i did that um, here as well and i've got the grill on this one just so i can show you how i can how easy it is to take it off so you just really just pull it off because it's magnetically attached and then the grill just comes off and it does come in the box by the way um so there it is speakers here now one of the commenters in my unboxing video said that he found that with the grills off, it sounded so much better. It really opened up in his opinion. So I tried it. I sat down, I listened, grill on, grill off, and I noticed a slight difference. So I brought my wife in, sat her down, let her listen on versus off, and honestly, she couldn't really quite tell a difference. So you really have to be listening to maybe hear something, but honestly, I think that these grills are pretty much acoustically transparent okay um and if they're not they're very very close in my opinion in this room so just wanted to put that out there now i want to move on and talk about my experience comparing the r6 to the q150 and the arundel sound 1723s all right i'm going to start with the q150 for this comparison because i wanted to find out how much better the r series is compared to its little brother the q series now obviously this is not a direct comparison this is a bookshelf speaker, this is a monitor. I don't have two speakers that are closer than these in this room. I don't have an R3 and I, you know, I, I just don't have it, right? The closest I have are these two speakers, so I'm gonna talk about those in a minute. But for this comparison, Q series to R series, all right? Now, one thing about these two speakers, the R6 is sealed, like I said before. The Q150 is ported, so what I did was I found the port plugs, put them in the back of the speaker, and I began listening to music. And what I found was, Basically, listening to the R6 is like pulling the veil off of the music from the Q150s. Everything, you get more detail, you get more nuance, you get more clarity, and basically the entire frequency range um, with the R6 compared to the Q150. The R6 is just a little bit more forward in its presentation, and the mid-range is more prominent because you have that dedicated mid-range driver and a dedicated bass driver, whereas you know this UniQ driver array is 
this mid range and base are kind of the same in this particular box. So there's a difference there. But like I said, it's like pulling the veil off of the music. The only place where I found that the Q150 was better than the R6 Meta is in bass extension, how deep it can play. Because this is a ported box, you can pull the port plug out and it will play deeper than the R6 Meta. One of the tests I ran was a frequency sweep from 200 hertz down to about 15 hertz on this speaker. And what I found when I was sitting in my main listening position and it was like 75 dB at my ears, I found that the bass drops off with the R6 right around 60 Hertz. And it continues on down with the Q150 to about you know, 45 Hertz or so. So the Q150 will do better because it's ported. You can actually pull the port plug out and you get a better experience. But that is basically where the R6 kind of falls down a bit. Because this is a sealed box, it doesn't compete well with ported speakers. So if you want bass extension, if you want deep bass, you're gonna need to look at the R3 meta, the R5, the R7, the R11 meta. Those are all ported speakers and I'm sure they will play deeper than the R6. Now let's talk about the 1723S. As you can see, these are both monitor speakers with six and a half inch drivers. They're both four ohms and 88 dB efficient. But the 1723S is a two way speaker, which means these woofers actually handle both the mid range and the bass. It's also ported. There are two ports on the back versus the sealed design of the R6. And I was actually a bit surprised because they are very similar in their sound characteristics overall. But I did find that the R6 again has more nuance and more detail than the Arundel Sound 1723S when listening to music and I actually appreciate that. The mid-range was also just a bit more prominent and distinct compared to the 1723S and that's basically due to the fact that you got a dedicated mid-range driver. So there is definitely some differences there when it comes down to music. From a bass standpoint, again, these were very similar as long as the 1723S was ported with the R6 giving us more nuance and more detail. But once you pull those port plugs out, the 1723S can play deeper than the R6. So basically what I'm saying is if you want bass and you want bass extension with the R6, you're gonna have to have a subwoofer to get lower than 60 Hertz. That's the place where the R6 suffers a little bit compared to a ported speaker. Now, when it comes down to the stereo imaging, I found that I like the R6 a little bit more because it has a bit more depth and detail to the image. Not much, but it is a little bit more than the 1723S. Moving on to movies, I sat down, I watched movies, and the funny thing is, I still had all the nuance, all the detail from the R6, but honestly, I preferred the 1723S because it was just a little bit more laid back and it just seemed a little bit more cinematic to me when watching movies on a pair of 1723S compared to the pair of R6 metas that I have here. So from a movie stand watching standpoint, I prefer the 1723S over the R6. Really quickly, I want to play a couple of audio samples so you can hear how the R6 sounds compared to the 1723S and the Q150. Like two magnets, we are drawn to each other. You just know how to push all my buttons. Like two magnets, we are drawn to each other. You just know how to push all my buttons. Like two magnets, we are drawn to each other. You just know how to push all my buttons Like two magnets we are drawn to each other You just know how to push all my buttons Like two magnets we are drawn to each other You just know how to push all my buttons Like two magnets we are drawn to each other You just know how to push all my buttons
Editor Cody here. You're about to watch my conclusions and recommendations for this video, and I stand by them. But as I was editing, I realized that I did not put enough emphasis on the fact that I think these speakers sound fantastic. Okay, they really, really do. I am truly impressed by what Kef has done with this new R series. Okay, they have hit my top three list basically of speakers that I've heard in this room. Okay. Just, I'm going to be honest. I'm not upgrading to them. I'm going to be, I'm going to say that too. Um, the Rendell sound 17, 23s just bought those not upgrading, but these sound fantastic. Yes. I wish they had a little bit more bass and I do recommend the R3 or, you know, one of the floor standards and I haven't heard them, but again, I think they would sound fantastic in this room based on my experience with that speaker right there behind me. So just wanted to put that out there make sure the emphasis is there. I think these speakers sound fantastic. So let's go ahead. Let's watch my conclusion. Hopefully you enjoyed those audio samples and were able to hear the difference between these three speakers. Now, as far as my recommendations are concerned, obviously I recommend the R6. I think it sounds fantastic with music, especially it gives you the detail and the nuance that you're really looking for in your tracks, regardless of the type of music that you're listening to. It also gives you nice depth of image. The only place where it lacks is in bass extension. It just doesn't play that deep. So I recommend a subwoofer, but if you don't want to do a subwoofer, definitely get the R3 meta, the R5 meta, the R7, the R11 meta, all of those floor standing or bookshelf speakers are ported and should give you that bass extension. Obviously I couldn't try it out because I only have this one um, or this pair here, but I do believe they sound better in the bass department compared to this, just based on my Q150 experience. Now, if you pick up the R3, I recommend the Indigo Gloss uh, Blue that they have because it just looks so good. I saw it at Audio Vice Live and it looks excellent in person. Also, the R7 comes in a titanium gray finish and that looks really good in person as well. I saw that at Audio Advice Live too. So I can recommend those two. But like I said, if you want more bass extension, I would go for either the bookshelf or the floor standing lineup of these speakers. When watching movies, I did prefer the 1723s just a little bit more. But again, I have to say that the R6 does a great job and I don't have any issues recommending it for a front soundstage. You can buy three of these and have a nice seamless front soundstage. So hopefully this review was helpful. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I will try to answer them. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.